are 10 things that it would have been really nice to know earlier in Bellwright, so you can use this knowledge right away. Number one, the game is not designed for you to go off fighting by yourself. The number one tip, according to one of the devs, is to use your villagers, not just for harvesting and crafting, but also for fighting and combat. They've taken some steps since the EA launch to try and help with that since the playtest, but they saw way too many people trying to fight in a 1v2 and dying when all they needed to do was to get one of their villagers to go with them and help them fight. I've tried it alone and with a buddy and it is way easier with a buddy. It's really hard to split the bandits in such a part when there's only one of you. But if you can divide them, it's a lot easier to take them down one by one. And later on, you're gonna have to rely on using your villagers in combat, particularly out in front of you. So if you try to outnumber your opponent, you'll find yourself far more successful when it comes to combat, especially if you're not confident in the directional system. Number two, you can create up to six different army groups and then use the middle mouse button to cycle between which one you want to actively command and what you want them to do. So you have a lot of control over how your villagers fight in combat. For example, you could command tanks to the front, archers to the side, and keep a squire protecting you. Whether it's early on and just moving a few guys around or later on when you're moving whole groups. Number three. The shack nor any building will not stop spawning wolves and boars in the area, but you can limit the number of animals that spawn based on population size. So for example, if you kill all the wolves in an area, they'll spawn back less frequently than if you let them all start to stack up. Number four. If you don't want to fight bandits regularly, don't build right next to the road. Bandits regularly wander throughout the world on roads, and if they see you or your villagers nearby, they will attack. If, however, you want to gain renown through fighting, then go for it. Number five, watch your renown level in the upper left corner and hire people before increasing your trust with the village if you can such as before you turn in missions or selling things to the elder. As trust goes up, so do prices. Cost of recruiting villagers goes up exponentially. So villager one takes 65 renown, villager two takes 135 renown, villager three takes 185 renown, and then there are a bunch more modifiers on top of that for many different things such as the morale, recent events, and then the quality of the NPC is also a factor in their hiring cost, of course. Also, if you recruit all of your villagers from Herndine, then the cost goes up at a greater rate than if you recruit one from Herndine, one from Padstow, one from Krasmere, etc. You'll even notice your villagers complaining about it if everyone is from the same place and end up getting a debuff. Number six. Unless prepping for a raid, sleep in the winter to get through it faster and get your workers back to work. Winters get longer and harder as you advance through the game. So unless you have a good reason, don't work through the night. 7. Build at least two water catchers until you get a well. You'll want to put one by the farm, but also put one by the cooking pot. And remember, it doesn't rain in winter time to get water for cooking. Number 8. If you see villagers walking around with a dot 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 over their head, that means that they are idle. You need to give them something to do, either at a workstation or put out something for them to build or take them with you and give them assignments along the way, even if it's just fighting at your side. Number nine, while you're running around the world, you can press H for auto run to keep going in whatever direction you want and pull up your menu to work on things while you're going. Number 10, set your villagers to be guard reservists or to hold ground. Then, whenever needed, you can just push K, which brings up the call to arms screen, and call them all to battle at once. It would be great if y'all would share good tips with me down below, and maybe it'll be included in a video. If you like get-to-the-point guides, consider free subscribing for more Bellwright. Happy gaming!